Africa has been a land racked with problems, which have prevented it from utilizing the naturally abundant resources that it's endowed with, preventing it from reaching the pinnacle of its potential. Whether it be social, economical, or cultural issues, the continent has always had to use the wrong solutions to solve its problems. This created a myriad of complications, which left the continent worse off from its previously untenable situation. The biofarming system is a new approach towards the enhancement of the agricultural potential of its subjects. The application of this particular system works to offset the improvement of other various interrelated issues, from economical levels to educational standards of the specific societies it is applied in. The definition and implementation of the biofarm system came through not as a procedure that was fashioned in one sitting, but through the system-based stepwise process that enabled the incorporation of multiple disciplines under one entity, capable of handling multiple problems through dynamic solutions. When we speak of waste management, I don't really want to call it waste management because it is a resource. And we start from this resource and then we try to change it to a valuable or uh, meaningful or utilizable form. And in doing so, we collect any organic resource from our vicinity which is not being used directly. Then we process it using different techniques and technologies. The most basic one is to compost it. The technologically simple fermentation process is by far the most efficient way of converting animal waste into energy. The nutrient-rich materials that is later expelled from the digester can be used as a compost additive or combined with water to irrigate the crops, further boosting yield. Specifically, the use of biogas for heat and cooking needs could save women from the difficult task of walking extreme distances to collect firewood. Biogas systems are inexpensive to install and easy to operate on both household and industrial levels. Water uh, is one of the most important resources that we have, especially in the field of agriculture. All rainwater that intercepts the roofs and driveway of the biofarm is directed to irrigate the horticultural fields significantly boosting production levels. We are trying to use natural means, simple means to increase the ability of the soil to be absorbed. We try to slow down the flow of water over a given area. By that we are doing terracing, uh, growing all kinds of hedges, plants, uh, to minimize the speed of the water flow. In addition, we are also minimizing the use of water through drip irrigation. We have different techniques. One is the standard drip irrigation system. The others are bottles, you know, simple water bottles are used as a special dripping systems uh, to keep uh, plants growing with very, very limited amount of water. We are also into water cleaning and treating system. We have got a new technique for cleaning water, uh, any water which is available in our community. We do have to carry out tree planting and terracing activities. However, our innovative component into this exercise is to plant trees which are of multi-purpose value. Trees that are not only good for stopping soil erosion, but they have to also be very good for animal feed, for honey production, and so on and so forth. So those are the kind of things that we add. Those are the innovative components in the reforestation exercise. On the other hand, the uh, building of various uh, terraces should also be linked to the resources that are readily available there. In some places you have stones, plenty of stones. In some other places you have vegetation. So you have to combine the stones and the vegetation in an alternative fashion so that the flow and the erosion of soil will be highly minimized. And those areas that are recovering 
should be used for ecotourism and income generation process so that it is viable from the economic point of view. The health of livestock determines the food production and food security issue a given area. As a result of this demand, we introduced in collaboration with the regional state and the UNDP a community-based safety control capacity building program. So the farmers and the communities were given adequate training on how to trap the flies, on how to make the traps, and where to deploy it, and how to deploy it, and how to monitor the disease, and so on and so forth. So with that background, the people were given the opportunity to carry out a community-based intervention. We, are, we followed the program using a remote sensed a GPS referenced hotspot identification system. So we know precisely where the flies were based on the survey that's being carried out. And therefore the communities went to those specific areas and put the traps and they had maximum kill and reduction of the problem. Throughout much of Africa, Livestock has been one of the many driving forces behind the successful productivity of farms. This impact is further highlighted by the effective use that the various implemented biofarm projects are seeing and the results they are getting from their actions. The effective usage of the various livestock in the biofarm has brought about the advantage of having to employ the various outputs of these livestock to different uses. The livestock and apiculture are extremely important components of the biofarm system. From our experience, livestock produces dung and urine, a critical or a crucial component of the biofarm system. Livestock plays a key role in, in the livelihood, in improving the livelihood and income and survival of the farming community. One other new and innovative system at the bio farm is vertical agriculture. Uh, you don't need large area to produce adequate food uh, from your garden. Furthermore, we are also looking at human uh, capacity building, uh, which is the Farmers Academy. Uh, the, one of the biggest programs in our system is training of farmers at different levels. One is ordinary farmers, second we have model farmers, and we are also looking at master farmer training. And this will also be strengthened by bringing in postgraduate students. So those are the major components in the biofarm package. This success is there because there is a demand from the community. It goes very closely with the government policy and strategy. And also, it is also adjusted and fine-tuned to the ecosystem that existed in the area. This initiative is also being replicated, not only in Ethiopia, but in various parts of Africa. We have started the West African program in Cote d'Ivoire, in a place called Korogo. Already the system is being established in the northern part of Cote d'Ivoire. The second uh, biofarm is being established in Mozambique with full collaboration and cooperation of the government. And thirdly, we are in the process of starting uh, a program for Central Africa, which will be based uh, in DRC, uh, very close to Kinshasa. Ten years ago, Dr. Getacho and his wife, Dr. Salamarit, had in mind to create a healthy, environmentally and ecologically sound biosystem 
which could work on solving the various problems that farmers in poor countries are facing. The difference in the biosystem that they were creating is the fact that they plan to implement it with local technology and a very small capital, which they succeeded in doing. The next logical step would then be to integrate this system to the fabric of society through bioeconomy. The integrated bioeconomy system is uniquely positioned because it enjoys the benefit of demand. It also enjoys the fitness to work with a given ecosystem. Thirdly, we are also uh, benefiting because it is based on a knowledge sharing research and operational uh, programs of the major continental multilateral institutions. The various participants from various parts of the world have shown a lot of commitment and determination to support this initiative because it addresses one of the crucial agenda of our time, which is climate change. So therefore, the bioeconomy system not only contributes for the social, economic and ecological capital, which I mentioned earlier, but it also helps address the crucial, most important agenda of our time, which is climate change. The bioeconomy system has presented uh, three uh, very interesting uh, interaction. One is the economic uh, capital of a particular community. The second one is uh, the ecological capital of that particular community. And the third one is the social capital of uh, that uh, community. Making sure that those three feel are working together for the benefit of the community. And therefore, I uh, was very much interested in this model because it is an integrated model that takes into account all the components of a community for a sustainable uh, development. We have already valued the importance of biofarm. And uh, for Africa, I think this is uh, a technology we should be emulated everywhere. Uh, the one thing you learn from biofarm is that you are copying from nature. The success of nature, not to compete with nature, but to work with it. This is the answer to climate change. By using a very simple uh, technology, we have seen how we can increase productivity of agriculture. And by using waste management technologies, there we can also have all energies and contribute to the reforestations. And I'm very much impressed by Dr. Geta Chu, uh, his vision, and the, the way he has been uh, training uh, many people, the, enhancing, this, uh, strengthening the capacities of many people, young people, men and women like this, will help a great deal in addressing uh, climate change in the years to come.